the social and political crisis in Haiti worsens as armed gangs continue to terrorize the population and the political elite fails to respond. Women's rights activists across Latin America are mobilizing to demand their governments to remove barriers to abortion on the occasion of the Global Day of Action for Access to Safe and Legal Abortion. Colombia's National Strike Committee called for fresh, peaceful mobilizations on Tuesday to reject the neoliberal economic policies of the Ivan Duque government. From the headquarters of Telesur English in Havana, Cuba, this is from the south. I'm Gladys Quesada. Now we begin with the news. The social crisis in Haiti worsens amidst kidnappings and assassinations by armed gangs, while the political instability has been aggravated following the assassination of President Jovenel Moïse. Our correspondent, Daisy Duzant, brings us more details in the following report. The crisis in Haiti escalates in a maelstrom of kidnappings, assassinations, armed guns, destabilization, and caravans of asylum seekers. The assassination of President Jovenel Moïse created a power vacuum even after the establishing of a transitional government headed by Prime Minister Ariel Henry, who, by the way, is considered a suspect in the assassination and proven to be a shady character. I'm not going to get involved in the investigation, but that specific investigation is going to take so long that it's going to be difficult for Haiti to have a smooth transition because those who are investigating have launched a situation in Haiti where we have like five options or more choices each time they come up with someone else. They are not really eliminating anything. Prosecutor Belfort Claude requested that Prime Minister Ariel Henry be barred from leaving the country, accusing him of having spoken of the phone with one of the alleged perpetrators hour after the assassination. The reaction was swift. The Prime Minister dismisses Prosecutor Claude. No distraction, no summons or invitation, no maneuver, no threat, no rear guard action, no aggression will distract me from my mission. Actions to create confusion and prevent the exercise of justice must not happen. The real culprits, the intellectual authors, those responsible for the assassination of President Jovenel Moïse, will be brought to justice and punished for their actions. General elections were scheduled for 2021, but the country's main political forces agreed to take an extra year to draft a new constitution and organize the election to choose a successor to President Moïse. Even the elections in Haiti are going to be difficult, given the situation the armed gangs have created for some time now. It is not possible to foresee what is going to happen transition that has not yet been started because we don't know if Henry is the one who is going to stay. It is not Haiti that decides that. Haiti is in a situation where there is no continuity of anything. Haiti is expected to hold general elections by the end of 2022. However, the situation is becoming more critical with new caravans of asylum seekers crossing several countries in search of a better life. While in the Caribbean nation desestabilization, the aftermath of natural phenomena, the power of armed guns, poverty and uncertainty continue. Now we address other topics. Venezuelan Foreign Minister Felix Plasencia stressed that the need to eliminate all nuclear weapons and addressing the high-level UN meeting this Tuesday. Of nuclear weapons is the only guarantee against their potential use. With this in mind, the implementation of the voluntary commitments and legally binding obligations in the field of nuclear disarmament, including of the provisions of Article 6 of the NPT, constitutes a historic debt to be paid with increasing urgency by nuclear weapons states. 
also addressing the high-level plenary meeting honoring the International Day for the Total Elimination of Nuclear Weapons. Peruvian Foreign Minister Oscar Maurtua de Romagna stressed that the use of threat of the use of nuclear weapons constitute a crime against humanity. Commemoration of this day provides us with an opportunity to speak with one voice and call for global nuclear disarmament. The use or threat of use of nuclear weapons constitutes a crime against humanity and a grave violation of the principles of the United Nations Charter as has been indicated by the International Court of Justice. Speaking at the high-level plenary meeting, the Foreign Minister of Bolivia, Rogelio Mayra, highlighted the importance of nuclear disarmament and the dis disastrous and long-lasting impact of the use of these weapons on the environment. This is a particularly challenging moment in time for disarmament and international security. We are living in a time of increasing uncertainty and instability for global security. And we are therefore fully convinced that this slide towards global instability also undermines our multilateral disarmament machinery. We express our deep concern regarding the threat to humanity of the existence of nuclear weapons, their use or their threat of use, as well as their humanitarian and environmental impact. Also addressing the high-level UN meeting, the Minister of International Relations of South Africa, Noledi Pandor, reiterated that the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons is a result of an effort by the international community to prevent a disaster. A result of an increased focus by the international community on the cat catastrophic humanitarian consequences of any nuclear weapon explosion as envisaged in the first resolution adopted by the General Assembly 75 years ago. The treaty complements the objectives of the Non-Proliferation Treaty, which remains the cornerstone of nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation. We'll be right back after this very short break, so don't go away. Welcome back. Women's rights activists across Latin America are mobilizing to demand their governments to remove barriers to legal abortion. In the framework of the Global Day of Action for Access to Safe and Legal Abortion, feminist organizations in Argentina, which recently legalized the right to abortion, insist that there remain outstanding obstacles to its implementation in legal, social, and hospital terms. Meanwhile, Ecuadorian activists marched on Tuesday in favor of decriminalizing abortion, despite conservative groups threatening to sil silence the protests in the capital, Quito. On a more positive note, Chilean pro-abortion activists are celebrating the lower house's approval of a bill decriminalizing abortion up to the 14th week of the pregnancy. The bill now goes to the Senate. We remain on topic. Women also took to the streets in El Salvador on Tuesday to call for abortion rights as they presented a proposal to the Congress to legalize it in some cases. Abortion is completely prohibited and harshly punished in the country, and President Nayib Bukele is firmly against abortion rights. The leader of the Citizens Association for the Decriminalization of Therapeutic, Ethical and Eugenic Abortion, Morena Herrera, explains that the proposal is a request for a reform of the penal code to decriminalize abortion on three grounds, when the life of the pregnant woman is at risk, when a fetal malformation has been detected that is incompatible with extra uterine life, and when the pregnancy is the result of sexual violence. President Bukele withdrew a constitutional reform proposal in mid-September, drafted by his own government, which opened the door to legalize therapeutic abortion. Salvadoran legislation bans abortion in all cases, with penalties of up to eight years in prison. Prosecutors and judges classify some cases of abortion, even involuntary ones, as aggravated homicide punishable by up to 50 years in prison.
We regret this proposal and this misogynist attitude without taking up the experience and the struggle of women. This is why we are here, because we want to present the new law proposal, the Beatrice Reform, which seeks to guarantee the health and life of girl, woman and pregnant woman. We are here to honor the memory of Beatrice and we consider this governmental refusal that we are now encouraging as a smoke screen to roll back our rights. We are also here to show solidarity with all the women who are deprived of their freedom to fight for their justice. There are 20 women currently in prison because of this restrictive law. So we believe that the government's refusal only gives us more organization and makes us protest more in the streets. We regret this proposal and this misogynist attitude without taking up the experience and the struggle of women. This is why we are here, because we want to present the new law proposal, the Beatrice Reform, which seeks to guarantee the health and life of girl, woman and pregnant woman. The World Health Organization on Tuesday released the final Independent Commission's report into allegations of sexual abuse by aid workers during the Ebola outbreak in the Democratic Republic of Congo between 2018 and 2020. More than 80 alleged cases of sexual abuse were found, including allegations implicating 20 WHO staff members. The head of the UN agency apologized to the victims and vowed to punish those responsible. first thing I want to say is to the victims and survivors of the sexual exploitation and abuse described in the Commission's report. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what was done to you by people who were employed by WHO to serve and protect you. I'm sorry for the ongoing suffering that these events must cause. I'm sorry that you have had to relieve, to relieve them in talking to the Commission about your experiences. Thank you for your courage in doing so. What happened to you should never happen to anyone. It is inexcusable. It's my top priority to ensure that the perpetrators are not excused but are held to account. Now we address other topics. This the Spanish government has approved an aid package for citizens affected by the eruption of the Cumbre Vieja volcano on the island of La Palma, part of the Canary Islands. The volcanic eruption has wrecked buildings and destroyed crops over the past nine days. Immediate halt at this moment for the residents that are still devastated by the advance of the lava on the island, where many families have lost everything, their home, their business, their land, their crops, and we must give them a quick and effective response, and that is what the government has tried to do in this case. The first part of the aid of 5.5 million euros we will toward the purchase of 107 homes and the other part 5 million euros we will toward families access to this aid to be able to purchase the most basic household goods and we will do this through a cash card procedure which is what has been agreed with the autonomous community. Thirdly, we have also agreed to set up different commissions to guarantee monitoring and speed in providing this aid. And we have more stories coming up after this final short break, so stay with us. Welcome back. Colombia's National Strike Committee called for fresh, peaceful mobilizations on Tuesday to reject the neoliberal economic policies of the Ivan Duque government. 
Social movements, trade unions, and indigenous organizations are demanding that Congress make progress with 10 bills, which were presented on July 27th by the National Strike Committee, expressing the popular demands voiced after more than a year of social unrest. The president of the Central Union of Workers, Francisco Maltes, stressed that the struggle against the latest neoliberal package of measures imposed by the Ivan Duque administration continues. At the same time, National Strike Committee representatives denounced the ongoing and escalating violence in the country, with forced disappearances, assassinations of community leaders, trade unionists and human rights defenders, massacres, repression by security forces and other crimes that violate the human rights of the Colombian population. The only decision the government has to make is to respond to the emergency petition presented to it. Because while the government goes around giving sweets to the Colombian people, it does not resolve the social situation that the country is experiencing. We have all the will for dialogue, but as we have told the government, the strike is not the objective. The strike is a mechanism to demand that the government attend to what has unfortunately not been able to materialize in the negotiations. We demand that everything in the national list of demand of the National Strike Committee be fulfilled that the government complies with all the points raised therein. Peruvian health workers began a two-week national strike to demand better pay and conditions, stressing that negotiations have not led to any solutions to their demands. Members of the National Medical Doctors Union of Paraguay launched a nationwide strike on Tuesday to demand that all doctors in the country be covered by a new regulation limiting shift lengths to 12 hours a day. Doctors are also demanding pay equity, noting that professionals in other sectors are paid on the basis of their specialty, training and hours worked. The General Secretary of the Doctors' Union, Rosana Gonzalez, announced that Tuesday will see a march and rallies outside the Ministry of Public Health and the Ministry of Labor, and called on authorities to respond to the sector's demands. Brazil has been one of the countries most affected by the COVID-19 pandemic in the world. The National Congress has been investigating the way in which the Jair Bolsonaro administration has dealt with the health crisis, and information has come to light that could come implicate the president himself and several of his ministers in shady de dealings in relation to the handling of the pandemic. More in the following report by our correspondent, Brian Mir. Congress has been investigating the disastrous mishandling of the COVID-19 pandemic by the Jair Bolsonaro administration for several months now, but new allegations have come out this week that are threatening some of the top officials in the government, including economics minister Paulo Geddes, the health ministry, and President Bolsonaro himself. These allegations are connected to a large healthcare provider in the private sector called Prevent Senior. During the first wave of the pandemic, when the Bolsonaro administration was trying to block vaccines from coming into the country and following Donald Trump's lead, promoting medicines for early treatment that had no proven effect against the virus, Prevent Senior commissioned a large study, which, unlike most of the other studies in the world, showed some level of effectiveness in treatment with hydroxychloroquine, including an allegation that it reduced the time that patients spent on ventilators by 50%. It's now come out that they fabricated the result of this study, they cooked the numbers, and they hid death records of patients who had died from the treatment. This week, lawyer Bruno Marato testified to the Congressional Commission that two weeks before she came in to testify, her office was broken into, thieves stole all of her hard drives and her computers, but that she'd made a backup of all the information. As a result of the material evidence and the testimonies taking place this week in Brazil's Congress, the São Paulo Public Prosecutor's Office has requested access to the data so that it can start homicide charges against Prevent Senior, which was one of the largest supporters of the Bolsonaro government. 
Thank you, Brian, for this report. Russia has reported its highest daily COVID-19 death toll yet, following an increase in cases linked to the Delta variant. A government tally reported 852 fatalities over the past 24 hours, records in Russia since the start of the pandemic. The new figure brings the country's total coronavirus death toll to over 205,000. Moscow, the epicenter of the outbreak, has experienced a spike over the past week, with authorities warning of a rise in hospital admissions. Authorities face the challenge of a vaccine-skeptic population, with polls showing that a majority of Russians do not plan to get jabbed. And we have come to the end of this news brief. But remember, you can find this and many other stories on our website at telesurienglish.net. And also, if you feel so inclined, please join us on social media. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and Telegram. For Telesur English, I'm Gladys Quesada. Thank you for watching.